All right then, so we have this query right here called get book query. And the idea of this is to go and get a single book based on this query variable, the ID right here. Now we've bound this query to the book details component down here, but at the minute it's not really doing anything because we've not passed that query variable to it. So it can't go out and query that book for us. So what we need to do is find out a way that when we click on one of these items, we take the ID of that book, pass it into the book details component, then attach that ID as a query variable to the query so we can go and get the details of that book and display it right here. Sounds complex, but it's not. But there's a couple of different steps to doing this. First of all, in this book list component, we need to listen out for when a user clicks on one of these items. Then we need to find out the ID of that and pass that ID as a prop down into this component right here. When we have it as a prop in this component, we can easily use that prop as a query variable when, uh, in the query associated with this component to go out and get a single book. So let's start this process. The first thing we need to do is go into the book list component and attach an event listener to each LI that is output to the screen. So let us do an on click event and set it equal to something. Now, what do we want to do inside this function? Well, it's first of all, it's gonna take the event as a parameter. Then we want to update the state to keep track of what book has been selected using the ID of the book. Now to do that, first of all, we'll do our constructor up here. So we'll say constructor and it takes in the props and then inside we'll do super props. And then under that, we'll say this dot state is equal to an object and we'll use a property called selected and set it to null originally. So this selected property right here is gonna keep track of the ID of whichever book we've clicked on, right? To begin with, it's null because we don't click on a book to begin with when it first loads. So when we click on an individual item, what we would like to do is say this dot set state, then we want to set the selected property on the state equal to the book.id. Remember, we have access to that single book right here, okay, because we're mapping through them. So we're updating the state right here to match whichever book we've clicked on, right? Then what we can do is pass this selected property down as a prop into the book details. So we could make up a prop name here. I'm going to call it book ID and set it equal to this dot state dot selected. All right, so whenever we click on a new book now, it's gonna update the selected property so that it becomes the ID of that book. Then when that changes, it passes the new value down as a prop into the book details component. So the prop on the book details component now is gonna be updating as we click on different books. So we can see that if I, in the render function, just console.log this dot props, we're gonna see it update as we click on different books. So let's just scoot over here and click on a book. And we can see now that this book ID right here, this prop is on the props object. And we can see it's 5AA, all this random string. If I click on a different one, it's gonna change. Now it's 5AB something, uh, the long universe, etc. Okay, so they're all changing now. We're keeping track of that book ID and passing it down as a prop into this component now. So now we have that prop this uh, book ID in this component, we can use it to attach it as a query variable to this thing right here. So how do we do that exactly? Well, it's pretty simple. All we need to do is pass through a second parameter right here and do an options property. And this options property is gonna be a function which takes in the props as um, a parameter. So whenever we update the props or a new prop comes in here, we're gonna refire this function. So this function is gonna set the variables or rather it's gonna return an object and it's gonna set the variable for this query and the ID variable is gonna be props.bookid. So whenever that prop updates, this is gonna rerun and reset the variable for this query, all right? So if we now console.log this dot props, then we should hopefully see the data that comes back from that query. So let's go over here, refresh. And if I click on a book, then I'm gonna see this thing over here. 
So we have the book ID. We also now have this data property, which is for the query itself. And if I open up that data property, we can see the book that's been returned. So we have genre, the ID, the name, color of magic. We also have author information, including all the different books that that author has written as well. Awesome. So now what we're doing is successfully taking the ID of each book when we click on it, passing it as a prop, then using that ID on the props as a query variable. So it's attaching itself to the query. We're going out, grabbing that book, returning it to ourselves and logging it to the console at the minute. So that's cool. Now we have access to the book inside this thing right here, inside this component. So what we can do is check for when that book exists, right? One doesn't exist to begin with when we first load the page, but when we click on something, a book will exist. So we can check to see when that book exists. If it does, we output the details of the book. If it doesn't, then we output something else like no book selected. So how are we going to do that? Well, I'd like to create a function to control this kind of output of HTML. So I'll call that function display book details. All right, so inside this function, First of all, I'm going to say const, and we're doing a bit of destructuring here, and I'm going to grab the book variable from this dot props dot data. All right. So this is just ES6 destructuring. It's the same as saying const book equals this dot props dot data dot book. I'm just using ES6 destructuring to grab that book property from this dot props dot data. Right. So. Now we need to check if that book actually exists, right? So we can say if book. Now, if this returns true, if this passes the evaluation, then we do have a book. If it doesn't, then we don't. So if we do have a book, then we want to say return. And we're going to return some HTML here. First of all, a div, and we'll close that off. Then inside, we're going to output information about this book that we've just grabbed. Okay, so the first thing we want to output is the book name. So we'll do the book name in a H2 and then close that off. Uh, the second thing I want to output is going to be the book genre. So let's do that as well. Book.genre and close that P off. Then we'll output the author name maybe. So again, book.author. Then we need to say dot name because this author property is nested on the book and we have a name property on the author. So Close that off. And then I'll also output the other books by the author. So I'll say all books, oops, not in capitals, all books by this author, like so. And then underneath, I'd like to output all of these books inside a UL. So we'll do a UL. And then this is going to have a class name equal to other books. This is just for stylistic purposes later on when we use a bit of CSS on the app. So inside the UL, we need to output all the different books that this other author has done. So how are we going to do that? Because we have um, book.author.books, and that is an array of different books. So what we could do is map through those books and output some li tags for each one of them, or one li tag for each one of them, rather. So let's open up our curly braces to do some code. Then we're going to say book.author.books dot map and inside we're going to take each item as we map through the array and fire a function and inside the function we're just going to return an li tag and it's going to have a key equal to item dot id so that's the book id of the item then we're going to output the item dot name right here and we'll close the li tag off cool so let's just scoot this back up here now all right, so now we're outputting the data of that book if it exists. If it doesn't exist, we want to output something else. So let's do else and then say return. And in brackets, we'll just return something like um, div and then no book selected. All right, so div again. Then we need to call this function. So let's copy that and paste it down here. Right, so. And we need to say this dot display book details. All right. So now when we call this function, what we're doing is we're first of all grabbing the book property from this dot props dot data from the data that comes back from the query. 
if that book exists, right? If we have a book available to us, then we're returning this content right here where we're outputting the name, the genre, the author name, and the other books. And we're outputting the other books by mapping through just like we did with previous things in previous tutorials. If we don't have a book, then we're just outputting this div with no book selected inside it. So let's save this, cross our fingers and hope it works. Um, no, it doesn't, <laughs> we get an error. And that's because stupidly we've placed this display book details inside the render function. How daft can you get? So let's take all of that and uh, scoot it out of here. Do we need that as well? I think we do, so let's grab that. So let's take it out of the render function and put it above the render function and this should now work. So let's have a look in a browser. Okay, cool. So if we click on a book now, we can see currently it says no book selected. If we click on a book, then we get details about that book and the other books by the author. That's awesome. All right, and every time we click on a different book, it updates, cool. So there we go, my friends. Now we can successfully add new books. We can make those mutations. We can list the books and update them as we add them. And we can display the details of a book when we click on one. So in the next video, I'd like to take a few moments just to make this app look a little bit better because it looks pretty cruddy at the minute. So we'll get our CSS wizardry on in the very next tutorial.